Well, wouldn't you just know it? I've driven 250 miles, it's taken me nearly five and a half hours towing a container ship of fuel, and I haven't even gone in the boat yet, with a view to taking you guys out night fishing on my own, solo, unaided. But do you know what? Somewhere you've got to draw that line between fun and stupidity. And there's a weather front going through. Fabulous weather. Yeah, fine for everybody on the land, as we know, if you're on the beach. Beautiful, lovely, refreshing breeze. But look, you probably won't pick it up on the mic up here, but it's blowing three to four, and they're giving up to five northerly. That's down here in the West Country. That's going to push me offshore. And I just feel I'm going to get a totally sleepless night. So I had envisaged doing a bit of conga fishing this evening. It's now quarter to six, that's gone. So I've come back up in the dockyard. I've chopped my wheels, because I've not been this side before, because I noticed behind all this vegetation there is nothingness. There is a ditch. I do not need to go in there. So I figure I'm going to be sleeping on here tonight. I'll see if I can't get out early in the morning. Tide is low at eight, so four or five o'clock in the morning will be up. I think it's important that I, as the saying goes, arrive alive much as I'm really disappointed that I can't get out night fishing in the boat I thought, I just, after all that work I've done happens all the time sea fishing this is where you go on a lake or river well the lake or river is always there isn't it sea fishing pff, man alive totally different ball game you've got the sea the ocean the weather the tides it's a living nightmare when it's good though it's very good so I feel a trip to the pub and a cooked meal how am I going to explain that to the wife? She thought I was having sandwiches and a flask of tea. I'm going to have a pint of doom and scampi and chips. Let's get rigged up here, sorted. Well, people, I'm back from the... Uh, Refreshment establishment, having had scampi chips and peas and a pint of Abbott's Owls. God, that's a wash clear off. Must be the tartar sauce that's attracted him. So, really disappointed because that wind up there, the, it looks, it's sheltered up this valley. This is a valley. It's sheltered up here. But trust me, I've got a bad feeling this is not going to lay down tomorrow. This is a high pressure wind, which I've had before when I've been Paul Beagle shark fishing. It's really, really annoying. Comes in on the north. So, anyway, I'm unstrapping everything. I know you folks like to see everything. So, I'm taking this opportunity to get myself organised because I want, hopefully, an early start. Well, listen, I'm going for an early start, trust me. Well, for one, I don't lay in, that's the thing. So, I'm going to coil all the uh, travelling ropes up. I've been down to the petrol station as well. I've gassed up again with plenty of diesel. It took me 55 pounds worth of diesel to tow down here. So it ain't cheap for sure. Give me a chance to get us up because I don't want to mess around in the morning. There's so many people down here. I probably, probably won't come again. It's just ridiculous, the number of boats down in that marina. I can see that in the summer being an absolute living nightmare. Give me a chance to get myself sorted out and I want to show you a method actually because I'm fishing deeper out this zone. If I go for a conger eel, the life jackets are going on, obviously, to keep everybody happy. Seats. Now, normally I don't put these on, because I want to go early, because they get damp, they get dew on them. With this wind, it's probably very dry. So I just get myself sorted out, and I get rigged up to save time in the morning. And then, I think it's time to try to grab a couple of hours sleep. Right, I've got some stuff I want to show you here in a minute. Smith, remind me, don't let me forget. What are the jobs? Got the lucky jacket. It's a bit baggy, a bit, a bit stretched and washed out now. A few years old that one, I think it's nine years old. It might be lucky, you never know. Let's chuck that up there as well. Number of, diverse number of boats is amazing. Look at this one, Pisces, fish. And just look at the tend loving care that this thing has had. Possibly not that old, might even be brand new. Beautiful piece of wood. Lovely wood. Lovely steering there. I wonder what this is for, just to hold on to, what do you reckon? 
got obviously the engines in here, probably an old bob engine, what we call a bob engine, bob, 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 bob. Winch there, it's got its own winch for putting the anchor up, which is strange on the side, unless the rope goes up there to the bow, you should never normally pull an anchor for the side. Beautiful wood, yeah, nice job, whoever owns that. Very nice job. It is Pisces with two fish, but the boat with no name, nice trader. Well, boat is there. unless it's called a Pisces, so maybe Pisces is the name of the boat. Maybe that's the make or the name of the boat. A nice, a nice day boat. Very pleasant. On the other hand, this machine. I don't know what we're going to call this one. An American journalist once called it. God damn, those guys caught a 500-pound shark and a bright yellow banana. That was one of the big American newspapers. Fame, but alas, no fortune. Well, cancelling tonight, A uh, allowed me to have a decent meal, but B gives me a chance to get to show you, go through the rigging up. I just got an old, cheap old case to put my bits and pieces in there. I'll just keep a couple of charts in case. And I'm going to get this rigged up. I can hear all these pigeons cuckooing. I don't know whether you guys are going to hear them. Let's put it on my head. Get this wire out of the way. I mean, this is a boon, this radio mic. Uh, this mic, but it should be a radio mic. We, we can't justify it, though, with the peanuts at YouTube pay, so I don't mind. So anyway, you can see what I've done here. you got partitions down there. There's a little lifeboat sticker. Got partitions down there. I've made it out of thin plywood and then put foam there to the exact measurements of this, these units. If I change the units, I just change the wood, don't I? Easy, always take a spare drain plug. I know everybody likes to see everything. A spare drain plug. A spare compass. So I've got a compass, a compass, a GPS, a compass, and looks like a broken bit there, but another compass, just in case. That is a Samsung chip. Now, what camera does that go to? One of Mike's cameras. For me, important for reading any charts, a spare pair of readers. Don't ask me, I don't know. Oh, no, this is what I do get. These are uh, pretty handy. Pair of, got these at the uh, airport. 8x, 8 times UCF Mini Pentax, but they're low light. What they call low lux, I think. They're low light, they're really good just for checking things out. Um, you, you know, marks, anything like that. Birds, very good for looking for birds. And they're small, so you can hold them in your hands. Well, obviously, you can hold them in your hands, grand the binoculars. But you know what I mean? They don't shake around a lot. But a spare drain plug, always, just in case. Let's get this rigged up. I might as well do all this now. So I do it in the morning. I'm going to be a bit tired. I've only got to take it from here down and get it launched. I'm hoping if I can get down for about six, maybe even earlier, in the morning, there'll be nobody around because it looks, man, a living nightmare of boats down there. I somehow doubt I'm going to come down, bother coming down again. Just too much, too much grief and aggravation. Get these in there. I think I've mentioned it before. Don't force them. They've all got little slots. Just locate them. And again, I don't normally do it. If I was in the autumn, I probably wouldn't put these in because you can get a bit of that. We get quite a lot of damp and dew. I keep hearing these pigeons cuckooing. I know that's a good sign for fishing. I should be barbel fishing. <coughs> there we go. I should also be catching pneumonia. My age, sleeping in an open boat overnight, even out in the open. Radio next. This is all jobs that I normally do in the morning, so it's almost something of a luxury being able to do it at my own pace. Radios aren't that expensive, and yet they're quite an integral part, if not the most important part of an equipment. I mean, you need basically a radio and an echo sound, I would say. That's possibly in the order of merit of the two most important things you need. And an ability to find out which way the slot goes is handy. For the power of it, that's it. There's a nut there. It does up. Stops it vibrating out. That's why I have those little screw threads on, in case you want to know. Obviously, the boat's banging around. That's in nice and tight. But don't over tighten them. And then a little plastic or rubber sleeve, and then your two power cables. Get them around the right way. Hopefully, I can get going in the morning. Then I'm not looking forward to the launch. The last launch. It's a very shallow slip there. 
So, it normally can be a two-man job to push the boat down if I don't get enough momentum going. Now then, let me show you this tackle bit while it's still a bit light. Let's get this out of the way. <clears throat> oh no, I'll tell you what I will show you. Wifey came up. You see, you know, in fact, I'm going to talk from that tonight. There is no rush. Could do a brew, but I can't be bothered. Just drink cold water. A regular folding garden chair. This is for a second person, which isn't many. <laughs> I think, I, I think I mentioned it before, I haven't got many friends, luckily. They don't want to come on the boat otherwise. Folding chair, folds out, but wifey had come into the charity shop. Oh yes, oh yes. Ah, oh, got to love this one, haven't you? And of course we have the captain's chair, which goes around that way, plenty of space. And this is way comfortable. Feet up. Zeds, while you're waiting for a shark one or something, or a conga to come. So, don't neglect a lightweight garden chair for the second person. You may well have a seat for yourself as a captain of the boat, captain of the vessel, but why not get just a folding garden chair, maybe with a cushion or two. This one's got drinks holders, but I don't take drink on the boat normally. A couple of cans, if you want, maybe one beer. Don't take any spirits, because I don't drink spirits anyway. It's nice to have a cold beer once in a while, but uh, God, I can't even remember a few years ago on a cold beer on a boat. So, next job. Oh yeah, here's a totally awesome tip. Always take a mobile phone with you. Although I've got the radio, this can get you out of trouble. You can text friends, and people say, I've heard one or two people say, oh, you'll be, it's no good taking a mobile phone, you'll be out of signal. Well, you might be, but suppose you're drifting relatively close to shore, where there might be a mast that gets you a signal. You can get help. Supposing somebody can relay it. In other words, they're, oopsie, they're close to shore, or relatively, they're within signal range. You're outside signal range, but you can reach them, or they can reach you. You can at least utilize it should the battery go down and you get no radio. But the other thing you want to do is, if like me, you're constantly worried about it running out. If you haven't got, and I've got 12 volt sockets, I forgot to show them last time. I use them for, well, I don't use them. For, I've had them put in for spotlights and stuff like that, see? Just little sockets in there, just for putting in cigarette lighter holders, that type of thing, for anything you want. Why don't you get one of these? This one, ah, that's well, got it guys, it's free. It's one of those, make sure we don't advertise them. It's one of those little, I don't know what you call them, Mike's got a big one like the size of his phone because he's constantly eating up his batteries. It's a battery charger and it charges your phone up. It's like a backup, I call it like a backup. And you got Right, regular USB here, you charge it on a computer, it goes in there, they're not selling them, no, you know us here at Totally Awesome, we're not selling them, just telling you, if I put this in there, that will recharge the phone for me over a period of time, in fact it's just lit up, it's telling me nothing, but no, it will charge up, it's, it's down, it's registering, it likes the battery, so make sure you got one of those as a backup, it's just a little something, but when you get low on the battery and you get something go wrong with the boat, you'll be so pleased you go, oh my God, I just remembered, I've got one of those, came an effort, I've got one of those battery charging thingies. I'm sure you techno guys out there will have much better ones than these, but for beginners, for beginners, anybody going on the boat, think safety, phone, battery booster, booster pack, that's what I'm going to call it. So all this could actually work in our favour as far as sound goes, sound monitors, because Yes, yeah, a controlled environment. I've got, I'm in this wooded valley, so although the wind is blowing, I would have wind tomorrow, wind problems. Now, if I go and try and catch a big conga tomorrow, or a decent sized conga for you guys, you would no doubt have seen these running ledger booms. Now they're mini booms, okay, like that. They're just very small. Now if you've got a strong tidal flow, which I've got up around the Isle of Wight area where I normally would fish, then as you lower them down, they go down like this and away with your trace and your bait, okay? So the current will stretch it out. So as you lower down, it won't spin up, provided you let it down slowly. And then deep water, 80, 90, 100 meters, I might be fishing tomorrow, I don't know. Um, those two are going to converge because there's not much tide down here. It's not going to stretch the trace and the bait away from the main line like, as you lower it down like this. Chance that it could spin up. So you want a longer boom. But I haven't brought any with me, have I? Is there anything I can adapt? 
Oh yes, oh yes, so there is. No, it's not the jacket. It is indeed the coat hanger. Stolen from many hotels around the world, these can make you nice long booms for deep water fishing, stuff like conger, ling, pollock, that don't tangle. I'm gonna show you how to knock one up quickly. Hoping you people are gonna see this. I've got a nice white coat hanger there, so it should stand out. While well, we've got enough light before it gets too dark. I could use my shark release wire cutters. I cut up here. I rotate a couple of times before I really pop it. Just to fatigue it. I don't want to ruin these cutters, they're quite, quite nice cutters. Then I take out my hip pliers. I've got cutters in there. I take my long nose pliers like this. I hope you guys are seeing all this. I just like to get it straight first. So I'm holding it and bending it. Now what I'm going to do, now we've done one on this on booms. I've definitely done one. So look up in the playlist, but here, you know, you can watch this as well. You can look on the playlist, how to make different booms. It's in there somewhere. 700 films, I can't remember what I've made, but I've definitely made one. Take the end about just in from the nose there, because you don't want to make a big loop. Ooh, I'm going to roll this around. Just like this, just literally, you can see the size of it. Hopefully you can see the size. Now, my fingers are slippery. You strip off the paint off this one. So I've got two bits there. Let's peel that bit of paint off that you easily see. You've got two bits there. Then I, I hold it deep in the throat, right? Like that. So I've got a good grip and then I bend it. Right angles like this. These are slippery, these, hey man. God knows what on them. Fish oil, probably. And rust. Look at the rust coming. That's terrible, isn't it? So I want that boom to be about there. So, look, there's my initial one that I've been using up, up the other end of the coast where there's tide. Now there's less tide, I want at least that so when it drops down it doesn't tangle. So I'm going to make another loop just here. These are so easy, you can knock these up providing you've got a lot of coat hangers. I roll it around like that, so you got it like this. And then I bend it, so this Hold that just there. I need bigger pliers, really. So this loop crosses over the other one. Watch. Like that. So if you're looking down it, you see the line goes through here and here. Now you've got to tie the weight on the end here. So I'm going to bend about there. A little kink in it. So pleased I decided to do this in here. And then you're going to put a cut, but you want it to come underneath that loop, if that makes sense. You're going to be lower than that loop. Just pinch it, rotate, snip. Then it closes up like that. Now you can do two things here. You can either take your lead, keep a pair of pliers around. You can do it by hand, so if you've got a thin one, slide your lead over like this. Now, if you think it's going to slide off, no. Just squeeze those together. Job done. So it's going to look like this. You've got your running boom here. Now look how that lines up. Got my lead here. I've got here an egg sinker, but you can put a plastic bead there so that, that if you had a small swivel, it might jam in there. I've got a big swivel here, doesn't matter, but I'll put this little, you know, this uh, lead bead on to show you. And there's my trace. You see that back there. Culminated my hook. So when you drop down like this, it will actually look so it's three or four inches apart as it goes down through the water like this. Hits a seabed, lays like that, and your trace will be down here, your bait will be up there, everything. It won't be, look, I'll show you, I'm going to do it so I'll show you what it looks like. That's no good. That's no good, guys. Because when the fish, that's on the bottom, when the fish takes, he's going to have to lug that lead along the seabed because it's tangled here. So you want that, look, like that. See how it's spun out? If I spin it out, I'm just going to show you for beginners. Experts look away now, I'm not interested in experts, there's just loads of them out there. So if I have that like this, you'll show it the boom, boom works. If I pick it up, watch the lead, bang, it untangles immediately. Or if you're fishing very rough ground, see it's easy to change the lead like this, look, just bend it back, that goes off, put a smaller lead on. Or you can tie a piece of fishing line on there. What I do is I tie a knot in it, I'm using 50 here. 
just a sliding knot there like that then you just close the loop up like this again we definitely got a film up on making these things i was just hoping you can you can so i will be using this type of thing and then about three or four inches down there and just overhand loop a couple of times with say a weaker link so it breaks out if you don't have a weaker link and you just have, don't you just have say 50 pound line if you get one of your knives like this and just gently just gently scrape away at that you'll make a little shaving off it and that will be enough that if it does snag in the bottom this won't this is a terribly blunt knife don't know what i use it for peeling bananas or something so that shave back that would then this one probably won't it does it just snaps so you'd lose your lead but you get your fish and your rig back if that makes sense you get the whole lot that stands on there and then of course you just tie another lead on or just open it up and clip another lead on so easy to change obviously you won't buy these in a tackle shop you have to make them yourself out of yes coat hanger wire oh. hi there how's it going windy too yeah yeah windy there too okay give me a minute i'll get back to you yeah, just give me one second. Hang on, guys. You're going to have to talk to Mike and give him a call back. All right. Switch that off. Save battery. Well, that's interesting because uh, Mike is actually... Both pullings are out. Father and son are out. So I'm down the West Country trying to catch this giant conger and something else. And he is on, I think, the cliffs at Windspit uh, down in Dorset. He's camping on an overnight one there for his bushcraft TA Outdoors. So he's filming. We're both filming. And he just said... The wind up there is blowing 15 plus knots down there, so it's really, really windy. So he's got the same wind up there, and it was coming from the east, and he's further east. I figure somehow it's not going to lay down tonight. Anyway, Mike's down there filming. Probably speak to him in the morning. Not the time I'm getting out of bed. He won't be up. And uh, hopefully he has a good night. Check his film out. It'll be up on his site here outdoors shortly. Don't forget he's got all his badges in. Any of you guys want those badges? I think he's got clothing now. I think he does a TA. I think he does this clothing now as well. Worth checking out if you want to support us support us if you don't no big deal we pay for the films anyway but if you do like to support us at least you get something for your money as well you get a product so i think i'm going to get my bedroll ready do a few more of these uh, booms and then crash out try and grab a few hours sleep right i think i've done everything i can do guys Marina lights are coming on. Well, it's not marina, car park lights are coming on. Great, right next, right next to the boat. Yeah, it's nice, and that. Probably not going to sleep much anyway. I'm going to try and get my head down before the security comes around and moves me off. I'm going to tell him that I'm going fishing in a few hours. My goodness me, some jobs need doing when you lay down on the <laughs> looking up in there. They always told me to put stainless everything up, and I didn't. It was very naughty. Oh, dear, it's just nice to lay flat there. Try and get a couple of hours sleep three four hours and they get up early and i'm just hoping i can launch this boat on my own my only misgiving is there's not much tide there in the morning i need to be up by I put the clock on five o'clock to at least get a chance once i'm floating i'm fine right see you guys in the morning well it's welcome to the totally awesome fishing show again we are here one man alone on a boat yet again i'm down in the west country of england a place called Cornwall, very famous mark called the Manacles, which is there and was years ago a graveyard for shipping, as indeed is still an extremely dangerous place in the wrong conditions. I'm prepare my boat while I'm at it. So I've managed to put a grapnel anchor down. I'm just waiting to see if it settles. So I've got one mark, I've got showing marks of rocks over there. I've got one in line with the other. I just hope I'm not dragging. I think I've got the last of the ebb, I'm going to try and catch you guys, yeah, just something different. Conga eel, but there's some real, real big ones in here. There's chances of 40 pounders, you know. These are just reef, it's not a wreck, it's just ordinary rough ground. Very rough ground. So I've got to lose some gear. Let's get cracking. I'm going to see if I can uh, catch you guys at least one conga. Fingers crossed. You know here at the Totally Awesome we don't ask for a lot. We really don't ask for a lot. We'll show you a few rigs. If we can catch a fish on that rig, job done. Right, 
Don't go away while I rig up. Here's my rig with the boom from the coat hanger wire, a roll of scrap lead, a leftover manky mackerel, and I'm just going to lob it back in this last of this tide run. Normally I've done okay here on the ebb, but I've really got it wrong on my tides yet again. Very, very rocky, and low, with these longer booms, you can, as I described, you can let them down a little bit faster. I am in, he says, look, and I'm in about 25 metres of water. And that, you can see all that swirly stuff there, that's all reefs and God knows what else that's here. Over there is a tide rip where they go bass in, commercial bass guys, tide, fish on that tide race over there. And indeed all around the manacles. Another tide race goes through here. I've been there, through there, but you know, it's, it's a risky old business. Now, am I on the bottom or not? Somebody tell me. I do not like moving it too much here. For Congress, you want to pick it up, put it down, and it's on the bottom, and that's it. The more you move it, the more chance you're going to get of getting in a snag. Right, rod number two. I only really like using scrap leads in uh, rough ground marks like this. And you could tie this on, look. How do you see this? Just with a... Oh, I keep moving that camera. With a piece of weak, weak line, so that if the lead snags, then you can pull free, you get all your gear back. And if you're fighting a fish and he goes in the snag, and conga are renowned for going into snags, holes, reefs, crevices, that will break there. Chances are it's all going on a one-way ticket to Davy Jones' locker. So there you got it. Coat hanger wire, Mr. Basic, long trace, big hook. And I'm going to be putting down... a nice half fresh bit of whitey. Just slash it up. You want smell coming out of it. Very much a smell hunt as the old conger. I'll go through once. Rip tear pull. Nick it again. Nope, we might get lucky, we might not. All I can say we're in the right place here, but is anybody at home? Oh, well, listen, listen, they're going to be at home. It's whether they're going to eat or not. Well, they won't with a towel on the end ground, will they? Let's lob this one back. I don't fancy getting this one snag, boys, because it's braid. I really don't fancy that at all. That's ticking out, that one, so I'm just going to... Now, I've hung over a couple of leftover shark bags here because, and I will be putting a shark line out, this general area, generally outside of here, is home to the British Mako. Big ones, three, four hundred pounders. But that's just years and years ago. Who knows if they're still there? Does anybody ever fish in the manacles? In, I mean, in the manacles like I'm doing. Lord alone knows what would happen if I hook one. Straight through there and on the way to uh, the south of France, I feel. That one's down. In gear, light ratchet. Down it goes. Right, third rod needs to go out. No rush with the shark line. I've got to let that chum work first. Now, I know I've got my tides a little bit wrong because they're quite big tides, they're rising tides. And you can tell by the line streaming back here. There's a lot of pull on that line. It's not normally good for conga here. I like it a lot slacker. I'm hoping the tide will die off. But what I can do is take uh, a light tackle rod and probably give it a go and try for a pollock because while that current's running, the predators, the bass and the pollock, will be feeding. Although having said that, there is nobody over here, over in that way behind me, that is actually commercial ba commercial commercially fishing for bass. You normally see two or three out here at least. Don't see any. So either the fishing is shocking or the tides are so strong they don't bother, you know, fishing for them, but normally bass is a big tide thing. So, it's flattened off completely, the ocean here. No bites as yet. I think I'm going to rig up uh, like a sidewinder lure or something like that. I put it on a trace. I can even in this current, it can almost fish on its own. Or a small red gill and see if we can't catch a pollock for you. Because I've got, I've got to save the blank. We've already dragged, I can tell by those rocks I lined up. I don't want to drag anymore because I might be in the manacles. And there's nothing worse than being caught by the manacles. Had a couple of nods on that one there. 
I've got the shark line down here, down the middle. New chum bags. You might be able to see if I hold the camera dead still my head. It's going straight through the left hand side of the main manacles over there. Ripples to the right, ripples to the left. Nice smooth runway with that bird, he's on, he's on it. It's going towards those two ships in the distance. So, fingers crossed if I did get a take, he zooms straight out that way. I'd never get the grab, I'll have to buoy the grab. Oh, there we go. Here we go, boys. Right, light tackle, spinning rod, spinning wheel. 20 pound main line. A weight attached by a piece of fishing line. It's called a French boom or flying collar. When you lower the bait down fast, it keeps your main line from tangling with your trace. Your trace is here. I'm going to wind up there. I've got maybe six or eight feet of trace, terminating in a small, uh, it's not, uh, what is that, a red gill, small plain red gill. I'm going to drop it over. It hits the bed, bed at the seabed where the rocks are, and then I just wind it back up slowly. I can even, because the tide's dying all the time, let that tail flutter and swim in the tide. Must be a very small fish biting on that. Could be a small, small, very, very small conger, but he's definitely trying to eat it. I feel as the tide dies, my chance will go up of both hooking a nice conger for you and losing a bucket load of gear. Anchor seems to have held again. Check drag. And just wind nice and slowly like this. If you get a take, don't strike. You've probably seen our light tackle Pollock fishing films in Ireland on the small boats there. Great fun. A lot lighter lead than this, obviously. Shallower water. You just keep winding. Also, must get some. Must get some oil in this reel. It makes a peculiar sound. Drop it back down again. I don't come right to the surface. Hit the seabed. Two or three turns to get away from the snags and wind it nice and smooth like this. I can't change reels guys, it's the only spinning wheel I've got. You'll have to live with the noise. Or when the tide's running like this you can actually leave it. Just hanging in the current there. You can get a mackerel on these small red gills, but you're more likely to get pollock. Not so much bass. The bass are more out there when it's when the tide's running, the bass um, should be taking. So I'm dropping it down. Lovely and peaceful now. Deceiving how close to shore we are here and how dangerous these rocks are, in a storm especially. Because you can Im imagine that the sh ships from years ago would come around the big headland there, possibly in the dark, under sail, Think, oh, I'm going into Falmouth up here. Nice clean run. No, they're right across the gate there. You'd have to go all the way. And in fact, there is a boy over there called the Manacles Boy. That's 200 feet deep, I believe, that, that, uh, that boy. And that's only, that's part of six, maybe half a mile away, 600 yards to half a mile away. 800 meters for modern people. Half a mile for me. That's some real. Right, now I'm just going to drop this down, crank it off the seabed and leave it because I want to investigate what that is. That could be a conger that's got in his lair. So it's going to hit the bottom there. Just wind it off the bottom and I'll just check that drake and I can leave that hanging. Something might swim along and grab it or not. Now I'll make sure these are on the bottom. Listen, mackerel is the best bait. I've only got manky old frozen bits of mackerel. I've caught one tiny joey the whole year. I'm gonna try this one for you, people. I've gotta go crazy to get it up. I've gotta get it off the bottom, it could only be a dogfish. Not a big fish at all, probably a doggy. One thing it does too, yes, it saves the blank. Pretty sure this will be a dogfish, might be a small bull hut. I'll be amazed if it is a doggy because I, uh, I'm over really, really hard rock here. This is the original hard rock cafe. Nah, must be a doggy, must be a doggy. Zero fight. 
Oh, is it? Oh my God, how wrong are you, Graham? How wrong are you? Right cost customer. Right customer, wrong size. Well, look at that, people. All over the camera my face. A small conger. Let's get him unhooked with the long pliers. He's absolutely mullered and mashed that bait there. And that's what we were after, but a big one. They would really like a nice, fresh mackerel, the big, juicy ones. Bye. Tell everybody to come and play with me. Well, there is not a breath of wind. There's just that one small little bootlace eel. Nothing on the pollock rod. But over there on the dying embers of the tide rip, there's bait fish right in the rip and the birds are over the top of them. I'll see if I can zoom in for you. I just hear that strange tolling of that bell over on the manacles boy. Got another small conger on, guys. Things are a little bit bigger than the other. I was lucky to get them out of the rock. He went straight in it. They try and get their tail around the back, like under here, and you cannot, cannot get them out. But this one, I think he took the whiting. It's a better fish. I've got no head cam, by the way. Batteries are dead on the head cam. Didn't bring the spares. It's really clever, Graham. Best to leave them in the car, which is on the land. As long as we can get to show you folks a fish or two, all that matters. This hopefully is on the coat hanger. I'll tell you what, definitely is bigger than the other one. Did you see the jellyfish go past? Oh, 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 hang on. Check that drag, check that drag. got to go hard with them to start to get them out the snags that they live in in the reef and everything there's some weed coming down I don't want that on the line well here he comes oh big head shake big head shake bubbles yeah he's bigger than the other one boys that's the main thing see if I can get a bit of footage for you this is so hazardous Cameras, boats, it's never good, is it? It's never good. It's never going to end well. It's coming up now. Nice and calm. Hopefully you guys are seeing this. Yeah, you should be able to see him now. He's going to do his deadly conga spin. He's wrapped up pretty well there. Yeah. Right, let's get him a ball. Oh, no, 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 stop it. Oh, stop that. A big hole in my boat from the lead then. He's wrapped up, I'm going to sort him out inside. Well that's done uh, all the deck cleaning up a bit anyway. Well the tide's dying, let's get those pliers back. The tide's dying, so it's like water. So it's not so good for the shark. Don't think it's a chance for the shark and I can always rig a bait up quick if I do see one because I'm fairly sure they won't miss it. So, you know, if they come in a chum stick they won't miss it. Probably going to hang around. I think I'll put the other one down as a conga and at least we can give it say three hours because we've had two already. So I'd like to get another one or two if we could. 
but obviously the more baits you got on the bottom the better but I need that heavy rod I really need that uh, heavy rod so if we do get a big one I can get it up and out of the bottom right let's wheel the shark line in uh, nothing with a pollock rod I'm sure I would have one now and again because the tide is dying the worms you know the bait fish it doesn't work so well in fact over there where those birds are working there's no rip now the tide's dead that's when the congas come out to hunt but the little fish are sand eels and the white bait and they're not struggling in the tide and the snake water they can see the predators coming but when they're fighting the tide and they're swimming like this against the country, they don't see what's coming behind them and that's why bass and pollock feed hard on uh, their bait fish when the tide is running possibly at its hardest because the bait fish are struggling if that makes sense I'm going to be struggling I'm going to get that other rod down Tempted to be honest to put this mackerel down hole. Put the shark place where I need it. And of course, fishing wouldn't be fishing if you didn't get the occasional. Whoa! Big. Dogfish. I've got all four lines down now. I've left a, a rubber worm just like, oh, there's a bite in the middle one. Why don't you just drop that down? Yeah, there's definitely a bite there. Yes, sorry. Yes, sorry. Let's move this spinning rod out of the way in case it's action stations. Who knows on this boat anything can happen. Thing is I want him to take it but I don't want him to take it into the hole. I want him to eat the bait but not back up into some crevice or cave or piece of reef or metal work from whatever's down there. Yeah, it could be, be a small one tugging at it. I'm going to hit it anyway. Now I missed it, it's a small one. So I missed that fish, I've got to drop straight back down for it. It could have been a doggy, could have been. Now that could have been a doggy, who knows? I think I'm going to put this pollock one away. I'm not really catching anything, I'm not up for it. Now it's back on it again. Oh. Another boat over there, I think he's bassing, I guess he's just on the edge of the rip, but with no tide. Hopefully he doesn't come across and bother me, I'm having a nice peaceful day. No, he's dropped it again. Sometimes people just come over anyway and see the boat and uh, they want to know what the splashing was. Did I have a fish? No, no, no. That's, uh, they don't know what a chum bag is. Some people don't know what I'm even doing. It's just so different to what they do. They don't fish like this with the chum bag over. So it's always different. Let's get this eel out of the way. I found my old head cam, guys. There's no sound with it. But we'll leave that camera on because I've got a, I've got a ticker over here. It all works. See if he's on there. I like to just lift it till I see a fish. If he bumps back, then I whine and thump him. He's there. Yes. Again, not a big one. 
Well, yeah. Actually, I think he's come off. He was there, he's come off. Same camera. Smaller, smaller eel, but nevertheless, worth catching. Seems like a good, uh, it's halfway through my spaghetti bolognese, eh? A real bang. It didn't seem like a small fish tug to me. I may be wrong. This feels like Snake City. It's a big bait, though. Got him up, mate. Got him out the snake. He might ping off, he might ping off, the last one came off. That's the downside of using braid, there's no stretch in it. Not a huge fish, just a regular reef or rough ground conga. Look pretty stupid if it's a ling, won't I? It's not, it's a conga. I'd say. Well, no. Tell by the fight. Oh. The other head cam gave up as well, guys. Oh, nice fish, yeah. Nice fish. They like that whiting, didn't they? Spinning. Oh. I'll get to you in a minute, people. You'll have to wait. He might ping off. There he is. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. There we go, nice fish, people. Pleased with that one. Listen, three conger eels can't be bad, another one lost as well. I'm going to give it about 15 minutes. A bit more grub, cup of tea. And I think you've seen that the old booms do work. Get yourself out in your boat and try and get a few of these kiddies. A lot of people don't like catching them because you can't eat them. You can, well, you can eat them, but there's better fish than these for sure. Let's get him unhooked and get him back. Now, if you did want to save yourself a bit of grief and aggravation, get yourself a tennis ball. Put a cross cut in it like this, this way and that way so it pushes in. You can jam that over the end of your rod butt like that. And that way you don't get any painful bruises around the delicate areas. So you can move it around from hip to hip, pulls off, pulls on, easy, comfortable, stops that gimbal, this thing, the cross gimbals, digging into you. Bite that fish, give it some pressure and use, no, not some fancy belt, tennis ball with a split. Totally awesome tip. I feel like I get another pickup, just a very, very slight bump. The boat's swinging at anchor, so I'm just to be concerned I'm going to get snagged. It could have been a snag, but it might have been another small conger. No, he's dropped it. Whatever it was, he dropped it. Fish on the corner one, boys. Oh, be nice to get one more, wouldn't it? I think he's still there. Oh, this is the one! This is the one! Come out! This is the one! Get out! Oh, this is the kitty! This is the one! This is it! This is, oh! He's gonna get in the rock, I'm done! It's the one I've been waiting for. I've got my tea down there. I don't mind if I kick it over if I can see him. Good sized fish. It's spinning and swinging away down there. They rotate at high speed. I fear the tea's going over. Oh, people want to Why not go conga fishing? They pull back. Oh! That's how easy it is to go over the side on your own. Not a man alone in a boat. A boat. <laughs> oh, oh no. Whoa, what? That's a bit better. I've got to unroll it first. 
one. Here we go, watch out. Oh! Get me there. I'm going to have to chin gaff this one, guys. I get anywhere, anywhere near it. What a cracker. Yeah. Oh. Hastily moving my tea out of the way. If this kitty comes aboard. It's got to be a chin gaff on it. For sure. Why put it away, Graham? Why put it away? Oh, it's a black one. It's been living here for ages. I'm just trying to alter this a bit for you. Just give you an angle on it. Hang on, guys. Where's that angle? I think you'll see him there. I'm hoping. Now, guys, just bear with me, won't you? Just bear with me. Wow. Bit my boat. Oh, what? <laughs> Stop it, Presty. Back that drag off, Graham. There's three fish. Ow! Good. Three fish on the same whiting head. Yeah. That. Oh, it's still coming. Still coming. Still coming. Don't tell me that's not a nice eel. And it's out of battery. New battery pack. It says new battery pack. That's it guys, thanks for watching Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I've got to say it quickly. <laughs> that is an absolute lump, is it not? I don't even know if I'm recording. It's just flashing up. New battery pack, beautiful. Oh, I could get him unhooked. And that's it, off home. Oh, good trip. There he is, boys. Big old George, just got on a release gaff. Check out the size of him. I hope it doesn't lash the camera and take it over the side. Let's release him and off. There he goes. Beautiful. Get in. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Make sure you watch Mike's TA Outdoor Show. Don't forget to hit both channels, subscribe button, bell, battery's nearly zero. What a trip. It's been really good. I'm glad I got you guys a decent one to finish with. Anyway, and this is my, I'm feeding as well, look. Cinnamon and a cup of tea nearly knocked over with the gas there. Eh? We'll see you next time for another episode of Foolish Man Alone on a Boat at Night, Underwater, In the Water, Over the Water, Wherever, or well, Not Under the Water. See you next time, guys.